So today we are not discussing anything too difficult. We are not discussing Google Cloud. We are not discussing AWS, Amazon, uh, Amazon Web Services. That is, we are not discussing Azure. We are not discussing IBM, Alibaba. Anything. We are discussing a really simple term, a really simple term that you need to know, that you should know by now if you've been working on these technologies. Uh, even if you're not, you should know that, right? What is cloud? Now, this is one thing that for which I have heard so many wrong definitions, so many misconceptions that people have, and not just any person walking down the street. I'm talking about the IT professionals that we work with. They think they know cloud, but uh, they kind of are making things up in their head. But let's take that right now. So, what is cloud? So, uh, let, let me tell you what cloud is. First of all, let's say there are a few servers that are kept somewhere else. Let's say that this call this location B. And you are accessing these servers from location A. Right? You're trying to get these services, you're trying to access these servers from a location different from the location of the server R. Right. Why would I do that? I'm just trying to access the services remotely so that I don't have to keep them on my premises. If I am making a remote connection to a computer, it doesn't have to be a server. If I'm making a remote connection to you at the moment, if I'm making a remote connection from my computer to another kind of computer, maybe a couple of buildings across, over a network, technically that is cloud. Now, this would seem like, hey, this is not cloud, this is called remote, right? Of course this is called remote, so what, is, what does that make cloud? Now, cloud is an overhyped, overused, over-exaggerated marketing term that has been used to sell the services to the people. It's a fancy marketing term that's about it. To its core, when we take things simply, when we think of them and we break them down to things where they're as simple as possible, what cloud means is that you are just trying to make a remote connection to any server, to any computer that is not hosted by you, right? So, now the question comes in, hey, why do you want to keep your server somewhere else? Let me answer that question now. For that, you will have to assume that you have a business. Let's take a business where you make t-shirts, right? Let's say you make t-shirts or, or even simple, let's say you make watches, okay? So your business is to make watches. So what's your expertise? Your expertise, of course, is to make watches then, right? You have three to 400 people who are part of your organization. You're the boss of that organization. What that organization does, of course, makes watches. Then somebody comes in and says that, dude, you should get an application. An application for what? An application for attendance. Of course, why not have an attendance application when I have like 300 to 400 users? It's not, it's not easier to use Excel sheets anymore. It's not easier to use the registers anymore. I mean, an attendance, a biometric application. That's cool. And another person comes in and says, you have a pretty good business. Why don't you get an accounting application? So now I have to have two applications in my this kind of thing. example. I need to have these two applications. I agree. I say, yeah, is that going to help my business? They said, yeah, it's going to help your business. It's going to help you with uh, working with your attendance. It's going to make that easier. It's going to make your accounting easier so that everything is more efficient. I say, sign me up. Where do I sign? So they come and they say, yeah, you would need these applications, but to run these applications, not pay attention. It's really important. Now to run these applications, you need to have a server. I'm a person who just makes watches. I don't know what server is. I'm a business guy. I, I'm not an IT person. Now I ask what server is. Now server is any computer that can provide you a particular service. In this case, the server is going to be an application server, which is going to host an attendance and an accounting application, or maybe two separate servers that will host application one and application two, right? So now I need a server. So oh, I ask them, what does the server cost? They say, hey, of course, X amount of money. So I give them the X amount of money, they bring in those huge devices, those servers. Now, the server can be smaller as well, but this is just an example. If they bring these huge servers on them, first of all, let's let's do a cost analysis here. So they bring these huge servers. Now, this IT guy that I just hired to have these two applications for my business, by the way, I don't know anything about IT. So they bring these servers. 
as soon as they break these servers, they say, hey, these servers don't work on their own. What do you mean? I don't know what that means. So they say that you also need a server operating system on this. Hey, that you need maybe Windows operating system, you maybe need a Linux operating system, maybe some third operating system. If you, want, if you need an operating system to run a server, I say, okay, sign me up for that as well. Okay. But now there's another problem. You can't keep these servers anywhere, right? You have to get a separate room to keep these servers. That room should be air conditioned. And again, that has to be specific to the servers. People can't sit there, right? It has to be only the servers, only the networking between the servers and the air conditioning because these servers are big computers and they tend to run hot. So, what you want to do is you want to get these servers, put your operating system, get the room. And by the way, you need the IT people. You need the IT people, you need the IT staff that is going to maintain, manage and keep the server up and running day and night. Anything goes wrong, they take care of it. So that brings the maintenance part. You have to do the maintenance of the server. So that brings us to cost, right? So what's that going to mean? Is that first of all, just these two applications, I can promise, is going to help me build my business or help me build my internal management of my business. They are costing a lot of money. Servers cost money, operating systems cost money, room costs money. IT people, of course, have to keep them on a payroll. Uh, there's a the maintenance people that are there. So it is costing me a lot of money and I'm getting nothing out of it. This is called, these, these are called capital expenditure or CAPEX is that I'm spending money even before I'm reaping any benefits from it, right? So KPEX is that you have purchased some capital and again, you have spent money on it and you have not gotten anything. But it's it's like buying a car. I've purchased a car, I'm not driving it or anything. It's still standing there just to purchase a car. I have to spend some money, right? Then comes another, another kind of cost, another kind of expenditure called OPEX. OPEX stands for operational expenditure. So the maintenance has to be done, the IT people have to be have to be hired, have to be kept on payroll, right? So OPEX says that to keep this operation running month after month after month after month, I will have to spend a lot of money. I will have to spend a lot of operational expenditure to keep the operation running. I just purchased the car that was KPEX, I need to run the car every day, I need to drive it every day, I need to fuel it. I need to maintain it, I need to get it serviced. If something goes wrong, the tire gets punctured, or I have a flat tire, I get it fixed. Everything comes under OPEX. It's a cost of actually driving a car. So, what I want to do is, what I wanted in the first place was, I want that attendance and accounting applications. Come on, that's what I wanted. I did not need a lot of KPEX. Again, I did not even know what that was. And to run these applications, I want to have as less of an OPEX as possible or you eliminate it, right? So then somebody comes up to me. Now I'm again a person who's, who just makes watches, who has a factory that manufactures something. IT is not my primary business. So somebody comes in and, and says that, hey man, why do you have these servers in your office when you don't even know what the servers do and how they work? And there are IT people and you're spending so much money. The business person, oh, yeah. I don't know why I do have. Um, do you have any solution for that, by the way? Of course, we have a solution. There are people that can keep all of your servers in their data center, not in your data center, right? It's not going to be your room, it's going to be somebody else's room, it's going to be somebody else's server, it's going to be somebody else's operating system. IT people that somebody else has hired, maintenance is going to be run by somebody else. Who is that somebody else? That somebody else is a cloud service provider or a CSP. Now, who's a CSP? It's Microsoft Azure. Now, that makes sense. It's GCP, Google Cloud Platform, it's AWS, it's IBM, it's Alibaba, it's everything that you have heard so far. It could even be a local cloud provider that is only popular in your city, right? But the point is, if you're a business owner, you don't really need to hold your IT in-house, also called as on-premises. You don't need to keep your servers in-house. You don't need to keep anything inside of the office. What you need to do is you need a 
cloud service provider, a person that can host these servers for you, that can host the attendance application and the accounting application on this server. That let's make this server the attendance server and let's make this server the account server and let's make this the XYZ, maybe some file server or something. Somebody else has the servers for you. What your company is doing, let's make this your company. Let's make this your company ABC. And what this company is doing is that they are accessing those servers, they are accessing those services, and how are they doing that? They are doing that remotely. What do you call this whole environment? Of course, I am remotely accessing some services that are not on my premises because the first thing I had to do was business. I'm focusing on my business and IT is something secondary for me. IT is not driving my business and if it's not driving my business or I, I should probably rephrase that. IT is not the primary part of my business. It's not my business. It's supporting my business. So what do I need to do is here in my company, in my organization, I make watches, I sell them, I market them, I do everything I can. But to support that functionality, I need the IT. That IT is hosted somewhere else, being managed somewhere else, and by people who can who can potentially do it better than I could. Now, as a person who has a company that makes watches, I'm repeating again, I'm not good at managing the attendance servers. If attendance servers go down, I can't. Well, it's, it's kind of difficult for me to manage all that chaos. Security is kind of another thing that when you have a few servers, maybe security gets. So Microsoft, in this case, Microsoft or Amazon or your Google or other giants, they are going to help you with that stuff, right? So that you don't have to pay the money. And by the way, there is no upfront cost of doing that. What do I mean by there is no upfront cost of doing that is that you pay for what you use. If you're using only a couple of servers, you just pay for a couple of servers. And by the way, it's not the cost of purchasing the server, it's a monthly rent or it's a yearly rent. So the thing is the cost that you're spending, you're spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for operating system, for the server, for the accounting application, for the IT bureau. All of that is not a factor anymore. Why? Because it's a lump sum amount and it's a very small amount. And that small amount of money is maybe is going to be paid in a month, in a quarter, or in a year, maybe three years. That's that's how you make a contract with these people, right? So coming back to the fact, again, I'm accessing these servers remotely. What do you call that? You call that cloud. No big deal remotely accessing the servers that are not part of your organization, that are just being rented by you and being used by you, and they are being posted somewhere else by someone else and being managed by them. You're just accessing those servers remotely. That's what cloud is. It's a marketing term. 